Hey everybody, welcome back to New Videos channel and today we look into something beyond props down, events up and still communicating from the parent to the child. Let's go! Well, since the beginning of you, the concept of sending props down from a parent component to the child components to, well, transmit data uh, or similar and change behavior, that was always clear. And the child components on the other end, they can emit events and then the parents can react to them if they want to. That's the contract, kind of, that's defined between these components, and it's quite loosely coupled. But there is more, because sometimes that's simply not enough. And there are a few cases we want to take a look at, the easiest in our demo application. All right, our demo application here is in the View SFC Playground, so all online, link as usual also in the description. And we have a parent and a child component in the app.view, or parent component. Well, we import a form input component that we have a look at in a bit, we have an H2, right, saying parent component. Then we have the format input component and we have a button that says what we want to do. We want to reset the input part of that form input component from this parent component. But, well, we can just test it and write something in here. It doesn't work right now, obviously. Didn't implement anything. This is just a scaffolding. Now, taking a look at the form input.view, we see there are no props being passed. So there's no communication happening right now between parent and child intentionally. And the form input component has the state, it has the name as a ref, it already has a reset function implemented because that belongs to the component here, right? And then in the template we say, okay, enter your name, to a data binding through the model, and of course, last but not least, if there's a name, write hello name, like hello Marie. Very simple. Okay, so what can we do here? How, how can we ensure now that we can reset the value? And the first thought might be, well, Alex, you already mentioned two-way data binding, there's vModel, so why not setting up a custom vModel for view component? By the way, if you're interested in hearing a bit more about that, let me know in the comment because it's quite useful. But in this case, we don't go for that solution. So why not? The reason is that we don't want to have two-way data binding. The name should only be defined by the form input component. So we don't want to have the parent giving that info down to the child in this case. Instead, we want to use the rule of least power and we want to make sure that we only make the reset function somehow available. But how do we do that? Another option would be saying, okay, this button, this should belong to the form input component. So we move that in here, then we can use the reset function. But there are enough cases where the button cannot belong to the child component. It has to be part of the parent component or the parent's parent component and so on, so on. So that's also not a solution we want to use here. And the third one we could consider is using global state, right? We could just say, okay, let's move the name into a global state, then we can manipulate it and it's all fine. And yes, while that would work, this also is a bit problematic because it's quite verbose and we don't really need a type of global state just because we want to exit from the parent component. So what do we do here? And the answer is we want to expose this reset method and then make sure that the parent can call this method. There are a couple ways of doing that. One option would be scope slots, but that's for another video because we want to take a look at the second option. And this is the compile time macro define expose. So what we can do here is we can say, okay, we want to make sure this reset function can actually be called by referring to that component and then just saying, okay, whenever I have the reference to it, call it. And for those of you who have been around in Vue 2, well, in Vue 2, this was technically possible. Every component was open, so to say. So you could always uh, even access props if you'd want to, data, so state, computers, and that's not the case in Vue 3 anymore. Let's quickly check what I mean. Back in the app.view, we can set a ref here, a form input and say, like, okay, this is my input ref. And now to set the whole thing up, we can use const input equals, and now we can use the use template ref function from view here and say, okay, we got it, use input ref. And now we can say input.value, right, dot uh, reset. And we probably want to do that in unmounted, so the component actually exists, especially if service and rendering would be helpful. And here we call the reset function. Or, of course, we can just say we don't want to do that straight away and define extra function, or we just move all of that in here in the add click function here. I'll probably just define a reset content function that's a bit cleaner and just say, all right, function reset content. Here we go and we call the whole thing. Now, TypeScript already tells us, hey, that doesn't seem to work, but to be fair, 
TypeScript is wrong sometimes. Let's see if that's the case here. And to do so, we write a few things in here. And nope, that doesn't look well. Um, also, OK, there's still an issue. Let's uh, remove the define expose here, try the same again. Nope, that doesn't do anything. So TypeScript maybe didn't lie here. And I mean, it would be weird, as I just explained. In, in view 2, this would work. But in view 3, this doesn't anymore. So we can move this define expose back here. And we want to define what the component exposes. So I briefly mentioned before that props and events are kind of the contracts right, between the components. And with define expose, you can also do it that way. But it's a bit more imperative than declarative, because you can define things that the parent component can access and not react to it or send down, but really access is necessary. It's also important to mention that if you overuse this feature, it will break encapsulation, because then, well, if you don't use props and events anymore, things will get messy quite quickly. But there are a lot of good use cases where defining expose is actually a valid way to go. But if you can, resorting to props and events is, of course, the better way. Nevertheless, let's see how we can implement that and use it. In order to find expose, the only thing that we do is we provide the reset function here. We could also provide, for example, the name here. Say, OK, hey, the ref, you can also access the ref. But this is an implementation detail, so we don't want to. We removed it in a second. I just want to showcase that. If we go back to the app.view, we see, oh, that works already. Because, well, thanks to use template ref, we already know, all right, this input, we have the type, and then we can also access reset, and we can also access the name. It's very important that reactivity doesn't work here. It's just the plain value. So uh, keep that in mind when you use that. Commonly, it's best to just use functions. And everything that you actually expose there, treat it as like the public API. So also keep that as minimal as possible. And now we can type things in. And boom, we can reset it. So we can just call this method. And here comes the interesting part. As mentioned before, props and events are the way to go, usually. But sometimes they are not enough, right? So you need sometimes to call a method in a component. And that can be here, for example, resetting something in the form or submitting, right? Or validating, and so on and so on. So maybe let's take a look at some use cases in libraries that you might have used before or that are quite popular view ecosystem and how they handle define expose and which use cases they cover. The first place where we see define expose quite commonly is in UI libraries like, for example, Next UI. Here we have the form component. And if we just quickly look for define expose, we see here, um, not the emits, the expose is here. We see validate, so form validation. So other components can trigger the form validation function to make sure is the form valid, yes or no. Or also get the access to errors, set certain errors, and even submitting the form from the parent component. Because how do you do it otherwise? Well, as discussed before, you can have hacky workarounds. And well, if you want to, you can even send a prop down with a value. And if that value changes, like, I don't know, counter, then I don't know. So, but it, is, it all doesn't sound like a real engineered solution. So that's where define expose comes in. It just allows you to call it method, and you're good to go. And especially for reusable components where you would like to like clear errors, check the dirty fields, and so on, it can be pretty nifty. But there's more. We stay in the UI library world and we go over to PrimeView, another very popular library in the Vue ecosystem. And here we have the popover component. It's not a big one, right? It's like, what, 51 lines with the template included. And here we see define expose down there as well to do what? Well, to toggle, show, or hide the popover. So if you say, OK, I don't want to deal with the state necessarily, or I want to deal with the state from outside without passing the whole thing in and don't worry about it, perfect. Then you have these options, and you can toggle that without changing internal state or even using internal state. And from the popover, we go to another component, this time in the view charts library, and this time it is a table. So you might wonder, why is a table relevant to that? And the answer is, well, if we check define expose as well here, we see, OK, sorting, filtering, pagination, all of that. Yes, of course. Um, maybe saying, oh, there is a filter. I want to uh, apply the filter on a button click. That's totally reasonable. And maybe you can also use scope slots to say, OK, I render a button inside that component in the slot to do that. But very often, you might need it outside of the component itself. So then the option of scope slots doesn't really work, and you need to use define expose. And the last example, well, it is from the Vue.js REPL. So actually, from this very playground that we used the whole time before. That's a dependency in the play.vue.js.org 
a playground. And here we also have define expose to expose a reload method to then just say like, hey, let's take the sandbox and reload the whole thing. So that could be also super useful if you have to connect a third party API that you can't really control in another way, but you still need to. You still need to somehow tell, let's say, I don't know, the prose mirror editor to do something or your map library. And oftentimes this is an easy way to deal with third party libraries without worrying too much. So in these mentioned cases, I think define expose is a very legit option. And I was wondering, do you have any cases for define expose that you thought, okay, hey, you didn't mention it, that might be interesting to hear. Drop them in the comments below. I'm curious where you use it for. And also curious if you might misuse it and if there are other uh, and better patterns. So drop in your experience. Uh, and maybe if you haven't used it, would you consider using it? Anything that comes to your mind, please let me know and share it with the community around us. With that, Define Expose uh, is, I hope, quite clear to you. Questions, as usual, also in the comments as well. Check out the latest Deja View episode. And um, of course, if that's not the most recent video, then feel free to look around. And otherwise, see you all next week again for another one. Happy hacking. <laughs>